Hey everyone, this is Johnny and I am in our farmhouse here in Sri Lanka and I know you know that I love to eat food but I also like to cook and while I'm in Sri Lanka I've been making Sri Lankan curries you know rice and curry, dal, all that stuff but I've also been experimenting with a lot of the Sri Lankan uh, spices and flavors to make my own favorite dish and actually Christina's favorite dish my mutton curry so today I'm going to show you how I make it and please comment below with any tips or tricks you have or if you think that my version might actually taste better than your mom's maybe not better than your mom's but for good <laughs> uh, so first off you don't have to use mutton you can use chicken you could make it vegetarian but it won't taste as good you can use beef you can use pretty much whatever meat the reason why i like mutton it gives it a really nice flavor i just use some uh boneless mutton that you buy in the, in the supermarket First thing you want to do is you want to make sure it's room temperature. And then second, this is actually something that a lot of people don't realize. So what I'm doing is I'm using the back of the knife where it's not sharp to tenderize the meat to make it soft. And it's nice being in this package because it doesn't cut through. It's a hard plastic. So if you ever had tough mutton, which is, you know, like, kind of like an older lamb, it's because you didn't tenderize it. So that's why. Pounding it out. So it's nice and soft, makes a big difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry it up with some shamakin spices. I'm gonna show you what we have here. We have roasted curry powder, some chili powder, some chili pieces that are dried. And then everything else is kind of optional, right? They have like unroasted curry powder, there's roasted curry powder. Uh, we have some turmeric here and all a bunch of other spices. Of course, a little bit of just table salt if you have um, Himalayan salt even better. And then if you want, you can add things like fennel or black pepper, but really whatever you have. And if you're doing this outside of Sri Lanka, I would say the most important which would be to get a packet of roasted curry powder. Everything else is kind of optional, even though Sri Lankans love to use 26 different spices, as you've seen in some of our other chef videos. This is home cooking. Use what you have around. So literally, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of what we have. All right. So while we wait for this pan to slowly heat up, we're gonna just chop a little bit of onion and prepare the garlic. So I'm gonna teach you a, a trick on how to prepare garlic. Normally you have to hand peel it, it's not a trouble, and then you gotta do all this stuff. Now just kind of very loosely break it apart into some chunks, like here. Throw away the peels and come close so you can take a look at this. All you wanna do, smash, 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 and then peel away. But you need to uh, be pretty uh, strong for it because I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get strong, eat, eat more of my curry. But what this lets you do is it makes it really easy to move away uh, this garlic peel. And that way you're just basically stuck with the actual garlic. And then you can just very, very roughly easily chop this up. It doesn't have to be the, the perfect pieces or anything. We're just gonna use this for flavoring. This is a restaurant. You'd get rid of the green, but I just leave it in. Like it's not that big of a deal. All right, so now we have some garlic, onion, same thing. Instead of peeling it, I just kind of rough cut the, the, the onion. And then just take off that those first one or two layers. It makes it so much easier than actually peeling onion. Maybe we'll take a little bit more. So this is kind of a weird onion. <laughs> <laughs> so my secret with cooking fast is big rough cuts. It doesn't need to be uniform or perfect. This isn't French cooking, this is a stew. This is a curry. And voila, there you have it. So, the pan. 
be nice and hot. I want quite a bit of oil. I use palm oil, but you can really use whatever else you want. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry this meat along with these vegetables. So actually palm oil is not healthy, but in Sri Lanka you can use it because it's not exported, it's made here. Yeah. So I didn't uh, went through all that process which, make, uh, which makes it well, the, healthy. The hard thing about palm oil is the actual oil itself is not bad for you. It's, the, it's really bad for the environment. So place, they get most of the palm oil from like Indonesia and they cut down a lot of the habitat for orangutans and mm. monkeys. So it's terrible for the environment. Mm. Uh, I don't know what it's like here in Sri Lanka, but in general, even outside of the US, it's probably not the best uh, oil you can, you can get for, for the environment. Mm. Uh, but it tastes good and it's not that, it's not, it's not that bad. So here we go, uh, I'm gonna put in first the meat. So if you had time, it would be it would have been an even better idea to marinate the meat before you put it in. But you can always just add salt on top of it. It's going to cook for so many hours together that it's going to marinate in anyways. A little stir. If the camera was off, I would turn on the fan. But since uh, that baby hear me, I'll leave it off and we'll suffer a bit of the smell. <laughs> So we'll leave the light on. All right, so we've given this a few minutes to brown, and now I'm gonna add the garlic and onions. The reason why I wanted to let this brown first without adding this is the garlic and onions are gonna burn very quickly. So I do wanna brown the garlic and onions for flavor, but I wanted to wait until the meat was browned first. Now we're gonna let the garlic and the onion brown a bit. This really releases a lot of the flavor and go into the bun, into the curry. I'm a good chef is you wanna start cleaning along the way and that way everything first off is clean but also you have less to clean up when you are uh, done cooking. All right, so now that we've given this some time to brown and for the flavors to come out of the garlic and onions, what we do is start adding spices. So this is when you can even use unroasted curry powder because you're kind of ro ro roasting it yourself in here. Ideally, you don't want to shake right in front of the, uh, the pot because the person might drop too much in but also it adds moisture to these and makes it go bad. So normally you put it to a spoon, add it to the side. You can do the same with the chili powder. So now we're gonna add the turmeric, which actually we didn't have for months. So this isn't even necessary. And this is kind of one thing that shows you don't have to have all the ingredients because even though it's nice with, with 26 shots and spices, it's okay when you don't have it sometimes. Yeah, I guess we, uh, we uh, need it just for like some certain recipes, like yellow rice. Yeah. Uh, something like this, biryani maybe. A tiny bit of fennel. Some of these uh, spices, the chili peppers. And actually one thing that we don't have in the fridge but I would be nice is some chili. So Christina, <laughs> can you go outside and get us a chili pepper? Less spicy. 
Uh, say that again. <laughs> Last time when you cooked it, it was so much spicy. <laughs> Even for me, because I already used to spicy. I'm eating freely in local places, <laughs> in local places, but that was too much spicy. My oh my god, and okay. Your first mutton curry was fantastic, everything was perfect there, but I didn't want too much spicy. I'm okay. sorry, no chili peppers, okay? <laughs> How about go pick us a small chili pepper? Okay. Yeah. Just outside to the left, you'll see it in our garden here. Oh my god, no, green, no, if it would be uh, red one, it's okay, no, don't. No, that's not that spicy. No, you have a lot of uh, chili pepper, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat this curry. I don't, no, I don't want to suffer when I eat it. This, is, this one won't be that spicy, I promise. Look, I'll even, let's check out, let's check how much spicy it is. It's not spicy, it's just like a little bit of flavor. It's almost like a little bit, it's almost sweet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. Not too much, I won't do the whole pepper, let's do half. Because a good curry does have to have some heat. So again, because she has wishes, we're gonna have a little bit of the spice going on. But I promise it won't be too spicy. But look how beautiful this dish is. I mean, technically, this could be a dish. But the reason why we're going to cook it in the, in the next steps is to add more vegetables, more flavor to it, create a nice curry, and really create something the whole family's going to like. So here's the secret, guys. We're going to transfer this kind of stir fry into a pot so we can add water, eventually add some coconut milk and make a curry to it. But right now it's kind of like a dry fry up. It's just it's gonna be tasty, but it's gonna be very strong. I'm gonna add just a cup of, of water. A little stir. I like mine a little bit more saucy, so I'm gonna add another half cup. So you can see, you can see right now, it's just covering. I'm gonna add another half a cup to completely cover it. It almost seems like it could be a soup, but we're gonna add a lot more ingredients right now. So fill this up. Let's let that come to a boil. All right, so that's coming to a boil. Here's the big secret, guys. Come close, don't tell anyone. <laughs> the secret of a really tasty curry is time. That's it. <laughs> By letting this infuse and letting it on a slow boil for two, three, four, maybe even five hours before adding all the ingredients, it's gonna taste so much better. That's how you get the really tender mutton, the really kind of infused flavors. So I would start preparing the vegetables, the carrots, the uh, potatoes. I would start preparing this, but they're not gonna be as fresh if I do. So I'm gonna wait, let this boil, and we're gonna come back in two, maybe even three hours, and we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients in. So as you can see, it's on a boil now. We're just gonna try to make it almost as small as possible. Just gotta go to this other side without the fire going off. This is how we can cook for three hours without all the running water running out and drying up too much. <laughs> Alright guys, so it's been about three hours since we let the curry simmer. I've added water to it a few times 
And the thing is, we've just been working. So we've been doing our normal life. So it doesn't mean you're cooking for three hours. It means you, you set it, you kind of forget about it, add some water when it gets low, but now it's ready for the rest of the ingredients. Let's go. <laughs> so I guess time for chef mode Johnny to come back. So I've added some water and let it simmer for a little bit longer, but now it's time for the vegetables. Uh, luckily we have carrots in the garden here in, at the farmhouse that we've been staying at if you watched the last video. So that's why they're covered in dirt, but also our potatoes as well. So let me uh, wash some of these. potatoes they're not just for juggling <laughs> so big couple of handfuls of potatoes same thing so the potatoes we bought from the supermarket but what's nice is here in Sri Lanka you can buy them covered in dirt kind of the same as in Ukraine or Russia it's normally cheaper they're fresher there's no reason to to, to pay for washed potatoes just wash it yourself if anything Grow some potatoes. Grow some potatoes in your garden if you can. All right, so we have some beautiful potatoes here. Most people peel, peel potatoes, but mainly because we don't have a potato peeler and I don't want to spend the effort doing it with a knife or make Christina do it. <laughs> I'm just going to chop this up. So... It what? actually, it's more healthy. It's from yeah. Me. So I'll cut off any kind of like, you know, really bad spots of it. But in general, with these potatoes, I just rough cut them. Approximately there in size, but honestly, it doesn't really matter that much at all because what's kind of nice about these stews, these uh, curries, is that you have different textures, so they don't feel, um, they don't have the exact same mouthfeel every time. So you can always feel some are gonna be bigger, some are gonna be smaller. And honestly, this takes so much time, like not, cut, not cutting it perfectly, not peeling them. It turns this process that normally takes people, you know, 30 minutes or an hour that they hate into something that you can do in two or three minutes. And it really, it's kind of enjoyable. Just wash your hands. Wash your hands, as well as wash your hands. because we added a bit of the more water to it, but you can see the meat is gonna be really, really tender. This is kind of just the, the base right now for everything. We're gonna throw in the potatoes first. In general, I like a lot of potatoes. I'm probably not gonna fit all these in here, but I like to have at least twice as many potatoes as there is meat, because it's tasty, potatoes are cheap, It'll use the starch to actually thicken the broth, which is always nice. I guess it's enough if you need also to <laughs> <laughs> use this bunch of carrots. I like, I like them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna set these potatoes aside and we take some of our carrots. These are the carrots that we picked from Harvest right out here, but obviously you can use whatever you want. So the easiest way to peel carrots and unlike potatoes you should peel carrots just because the skin doesn't taste very good use a peeler or you can use a knife like this so if you look closely i'm just kind of 
pulling off a little bit of the side and you just turn it and voila. Okay, so let's do a few more. I'll do it nice and slow so you can see it in long, long motions. It's basically peeling off, I don't know if you guys can see, it's peeling off some of the, the dirt here and also the hard skin. Most of the Airbnbs I'm staying at, especially here in Sri Lanka, don't have vegetable peelers. So I've been kind of relying on this technique, but honestly it works completely fine. If anything, it's probably faster than using an actual peeler and it takes away less of the, the flesh. So you actually get to keep more, more carrot. Is it peeler or eggshell? Eggshell. 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 <laughs> so before people do did it all the time. These small carrots are a little bit harder to peel, but when you have bigger ones, even these kind of ugly ginseng ones. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, some people say it's beautiful. <laughs> Cute. It looks like a piece of ginseng, I think. allows you not to even wash the, the carrot as good as uh, you need to because you're peeling off all of the dirt anyways. And we're gonna wash it again now just to take off the, the skin. And the reason why we put in the potatoes first is they take a little bit longer to cook than the carrots. So we wanted to give it a little extra time. But voila, so cut off the two ends. I cut off a little bit more of the top just because it's not as tender, but, and we have so many carrots. Uh, be on this farm, but you don't have to cut off this much of the top. But for me, it's not as tasty up here. Another knife trick, always put your hands like this, like a tiger claw. And that way, when you put it against your knife here, when you push down, even if it touches, it can't cut you. So if you look at it from this side, if you look at it from this side, it's not going to cut my finger, even if it's touching here, because it's, it's bent. Perfect. With all that, this is all the carrots we got, actually. <laughs> it's not as much as I, I thought it would be. It's good because we, have, we don't have enough to yeah. <laughs> space. So for the carrots, they, you could even just throw them in this size and maybe actually it would taste good, but I'm just going to give it another little rough cut like we did with the potatoes and just make them a little bit smaller. But I like the big carrots. I like big chunks of a vegetable. So don't worry about making them too small. Oops. Definitely don't make, don't worry about making them perfect. And if anything, if you really want, you can even cut them in different directions. It has some long ones, some some short ones, and because by having them in different sizes, it actually gives it a different texture and a mouthfeel, and it actually looks kind of cool. Like when you have different varieties of uh, vegetables inside your inside your stew or your curry. Notice I keep saying stew and curry interchangeably because even though here in Sri Lanka, this would be rice and curry, like the meat dish version of it, in most countries, this is very similar to a stew. I think the only real big difference is that the curry you use the curry spices, it makes it a little bit more spicy. So you use less of the curry, more rice, 
And traditionally in Sri Lanka, you have six or seven curries. All of you have a train going by? No, it's very charming. Yeah, so in this country house, it's beautiful uh, to, to be able to go out, grab a pepper for some spice. There's a cow mooing <laughs> behind me to go get these carrots fresh from the fields. Uh, and also a lot of these other vegetables here as well. But you can do this anywhere. You can do this in Colombo, you can do this in Candy, you can do this in San Francisco, in New York, in London. Look at this. This could be a Irish stew with beef, but because of the spices we're using and the way that we're gonna boil this down and then add coconut milk after, it's gonna taste like a Sri Lankan curry. All right, so the last one we want to throw in is cinnamon, but not the one that you keep in your house. You have, actually I used that last time. <laughs> no! So it's good I didn't know it when I was eating it. <laughs> yeah, but try to use a fresh cinnamon stick if you can. Uh, depends how silly you want it. I think half of this would be good. Mm -hmm. So half. Don't break it up too much because there are, you're not going to eat this. You're just going to have it sit in there for some flavor. Mm -hmm. And that is really it. We're, we're going to taste this a little bit later because right now the carrot is going to add sweetness. The potato is going to add it to make it more starchy and a bit more thick. So right now, even if we taste it, it's not gonna taste the same as the finished product. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let that simmer for another hour. later the soup is boiling down we have the potatoes in there getting starchy kind of thickening it up the flavors are infusing it's getting dark outside if you can see so we are just about ready <laughs> to take all of our vegetables <laughs> and make a meal out of this so let's come over first off we have some coconut milk to thicken it up you can use any kind of coconut milk. I really like these packages. Obviously, you can make it fresh. Christina loves making it fresh, but we don't have a, a grater or anything here. But these actually work just as, just as well. So honestly, just use this. It's way easier. And then you take a look. It's I've added water to this to kind of uh, make this a lot thicker. I mean, a lot uh, with a lot more soup. The potatoes. You can tell if you just kind of break it apart that the potatoes are cooked, the carrots are cooked, everything is cooked. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some of this coconut milk, this beautiful coconut milk, to thicken it up, to make it creamy, give it that flavor. You guys ready? Let's do it. container for a bit to melt it but you really want to make sure it's nice and uh, shaken up so you get the cream and the milk kind of mixed together you can kind of take a look so right now it's not as creamy or thick as I want it to be so I'm just going to add a little bit more of this coconut milk and even now you can already start to start to taste it but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it boil again and uh, 
actually simmered down a bit. It's a bit too wet for my, my taste. This looks more like a soup. And then I'm gonna taste it afterwards. So let's put this on. Let's turn on the fire a bit. And then I'm gonna have Christina make the rice. Hi guys, so now I will cook some rice. So we figured out that we have turmeric, which I couldn't find earlier anywhere on our island. So to today will be yellow rice. So first we will take rice. So it's for two persons, but uh, uh, both me and <laughs> Johnny has very good appetite. So actually it's almost all nice. Right. So I will wash it. So why do we want the rice? Hmm? Do we want the rice? For sure, yes. To get rid of the starches. Yeah. The cloudiness. And also the, the rocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we put the rice here into the rice cooker. <laughs> We've just done it. We washed it in here as well. But <laughs> I'm sure Christina did it because it's more beautiful. <laughs> I just dump it in there and wash it in there. <laughs> so, but now first we need to do some preparations for flavor. So. Spices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be fair, this curry is so flavorful that you can just use white rice. It tastes great, but yes, if you want, you can also make a nice seasoned rice as well. So we will add some, some chili to the flakes. Not too much. Yeah, because I didn't like spicy and as uh, Jenny mentioned that like no need to give a lot of flavors because curry is all, uh, already very I guess it was too little. And now some onion. So this is the, the difference in the styles between delicate Christina <laughs> and brutal Johnny. <laughs> but both ways, get gets the garlic in the pan, so it's okay. <laughs> peeled garlic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's clean, it's inside the pepper. <laughs> no. Okay. 
can't now. I prefer now like to smash it. You could have just smashed it before. <laughs> because I don't, I can't to do it like just like this. Uh, so without the skin, it's much easier to do, and it's easier to do with the bigger actually. <laughs> I can't like stab it. So this way, some flavor comes from the garlic and. As well, we can just cut it roughly in any way because it's just for flavor. And it's not. So I'm it here. A little bit more oil. So our oil is finished. I'm trying to use it to cook on it all. <laughs> uh, we also have butter. Butter? Yeah. Ah, I was thinking it's finished. But okay. So it's coconut oil, and for some reason, I don't know why, you know what I mean, it has such white color and such texture. Yeah, because of the cold. Yeah. Mm. It's usually too small. To fry it, we'll be to get some flavor. Such butter is different. So now we will add So right now, you can see everything is cooked. The potatoes are cooked, everything's soft. That means that the flavors from the carrots have sweetened uh, the curry, the meat it has infused, the curry's infused. And now what we wanna do is you wanna taste to see if it needs more salt, if it needs to balance something, maybe it's too spicy, you need to add something to it. And here's the thing is, the reason why I don't taste throughout the process is the flavors change. 
as it cooks. So we have the base flavor, which you kind of guessed on. And the more you do this, the, the closer you're gonna to get to perfection. But when you're using, using different spices, different levels, different types of chilies, that some are more spicy than others, really it's impossible to know. So don't worry, it doesn't need to be perfect. This is our time to do the balance. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this, it's so nice. Mm. Okay, so I'm tasting, tasting it. I taste a lot of the coconut milk, which means we, a little bit of the spice. Yeah, so coconut milk reduces the spiciness. Yeah. So if you're afraid to make it spicy, that you added too much chili, mm -hmm. you can settle down it, adding just uh, by adding just more coconut milk. So we definitely want to add more salt. Mm-hmm. Because I, I didn't actually uh, salt this that much. I only salted the meat a bit. So we're going to add that salt in. And then we're going to see how this changes the profile. Sometimes you need to add more sugar if it feels too salty and too spicy. And in this case, it was too sweet from the coconut milk. So we're actually going to add salt and let's see how it tastes now. And the nice thing about salt is it doesn't take a long time to infuse or cook. It's always, mm -hmm. it's always hard when it's like <laughs> steaming hot, so you get better to wait a minute. <laughs> a little bit more salt. Johnny, you know what? What? I forgot to add salt to the rice. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, so many people are afraid of salt. <laughs> like. But actually, uh, uh, very uh, often uh, rice even not salt, salted at all because mm -hmm. of the curry, mm -hmm. because it already has so rich flavor and a lot of salt. But yeah, it's re yellow rice, so we need to salt it. Yeah, uh, and also with like curries, like nobody's gonna die of hypertension from table salt. It's usually from prepackaged or processed foods, so mm -hmm. you're not gonna add enough salt to cure yourself. So don't even worry about it. Now it's good. Great. So let that simmer while the rice cooks. All right, guys, so while we're waiting for this to cook, I'm gonna just stir fry some vegetables on the side. You don't need to. This is a full meal by itself, just the rice and curry has vegetables in it. But because we have all these free vegetables from the farm, why not have a little side dish of vegetables that will help here, make my mama proud. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna take a bit of carrot, very quick, great, like we learned earlier. Come take a look. Mm -hmm. And done. Chop that off. Move it off to the side. So we're gonna very quickly, very thinly cut some carrot. Just like that. If anything, I don't like big pieces of carrot in my stir fry. So I'm just going to cut it again and just make all the pieces a little bit smaller. And remember, it doesn't need to be perfectly julienned. This is just going in your stomach. We want this to be quick and easy. So we just chop it up and that's done. Garlic, same thing. <laughs> we're going to do, not Christina style, but Zani style. So I'm going to quickly peel this. Get some whole garlic. And what do we do, guys? Put it here, palm. Oh, wait. All right. <laughs> uh huh. So we're gonna put the blade down, our palm. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just gonna smack. Smack. Oh my gosh. Okay. Smack. And you don't have to be afraid because it's, it's flat. So there you go, the, the garlic is done. It's peeled automatically, so you don't have to peel it. You don't even have to cut it now because it's already so smashed up. But what I do is I give it just a very quick chop again. Right. You 
had like a, a different knife, yeah, if you had like a butcher knife, you can chop it that way. But we don't, so we're just gonna chop it like this. Rough cut, rough cut, rough cut. So, put it on the fire. You want very high flame, as high as you can, Chinese style. I wish I had a wok to cook it more, but we don't. We also don't have any oil. <laughs> So we're gonna use a little bit of butter, which is actually gonna give a nice flavor anyways. Let's throw that in there. And. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, nice. Now we are going to take these kind of uh, harder, the carrots and the, the, the garlic. That's spread around a bit first. We're gonna let that cook. Carrots take a little bit longer to cook, so we're gonna put it first with it. Give that a little mix. All right. Two days to mix it. You can just throw it up in the air like that. Try not to smell too much. <laughs> now we're just gonna very rough cut some vegetables. So we have the Chinese cabbage, also known as white cabbage. Big cut. Look at this. Big cut. Take a look. Big cut. Big cut. Big cut. That's about how much we could fit. Also with the normal, normal cabbage. Couple of big cuts. And just to give it color, we're going to use this purple cabbage as well that we also picked from the farm. Yeah, it's very delicious. Big cut. These are just our leftovers, to be honest. Mm -hmm. All right. And now what do we have? We have big chunks of uh, a vegetable. Let's just cut them up, dissect them a bit. And it looks like it's a lot, but when you cook it, it really cooks down. So a, a big tip is always cook twice as many leafy vegetables as you think you'll need, especially with spinach or white cabbage. Because even though it looks like so much right now, once we actually cook it down, I promise you, it won't be that much. Especially when you drop half it on the floor. <laughs> All right, so let's throw this in here. So this is a good opportunity where you can just season your vegetables a bit with the salt. And the problem with these small pans, besides the food flying everywhere, because it's so small, is it's kind of hard to cook a lot of vegetables or if you're just in a stir. So I'm just gonna kind of very gently <laughs> try to stir this around. You can even use the lid to steam it. Mm. Give it a little shake in here, that way it can still move without you dropping half the vegetables on the floor. So, even though we, we started with so much vegetables that it wouldn't even fit in a pan, you can see already it's melting down to about halfway. Maybe. And if I wanted to add more flavor, I can add some curry powder or some pepper or something. But honestly, I kind of just want to taste these fresh vegetables on the side of our curry because that's going to have so much flavor. So this is done, guys. This is done. Just leave it on the side, mm -hmm. off the heat, and we're gonna serve this with our rice and curry. Nice. So rice is ready, 
And now the last step is to fry some cashews. It will add beautiful and very delicious flavor. So, a little bit of butter for tonight. as well, but I guess there are so many flavors that it's better just to fry it a little bit. So actually, uh, what I like in Sri Lanka, it's first time when I tried uh, spiced uh, cashews and peanuts. So it, actually it's very nice and delicious snack. Even like, for example, when you're drinking a glass of wine, you can uh, fry a little bit um, cashews in spices, and it will be a really beautiful snack. Mm, some deviled cashews. Yeah. All right. So we've been cooking since what 2 p.m. right after lunch. Yeah, like, <laughs> yes. But to be fair, we weren't cooking all the time. We were, we were sitting here. We we're working. I was on my laptop. And we, so in total, we're spending about 30 minutes cooking. Yeah, I guess not too much, really. Yes. So a few minutes and other cashews already fried a little bit. And we are adding them to our yellow. Of rice, it was used basmati rice. It's better to use long uh, rice. It will be more delicious. Okay, so let's check. <laughs> mm. Good job. Mm. Okay, so dinner is served. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. get a couple plates. Mm -hmm. All right, so we transform our work table into a proper dining table. And I poured some wine, because it's our last night here. Yes, so celebration. Yeah. <laughs> we will miss this, this, this house. So we have our beautiful yellow rice. And honestly, even if we just ate this, I'd be pretty happy. But let's also plate up the vegetables and the curry. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they look. Mm, oh my god. Oh my god, really, the flavor is fantastic. It's fantastic. Mm, it's uh, the smell already, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. So what I like is that this like texture of uh, it's not, not too much liquid. So my uh, like Johnny's mutton curry is my favorite curry. Like I never liked curry <laughs> as much as Johnny's is. And I guess yes, that the secret is because he cooks it for several hours. Which is why when you taste it, uh, meat is melting in your mouth. Okay. okay, I guess it's enough. Really, like it was huge amount of vegetables, and really look. Like now it's just like everything can be placed in small bowl. Mm. 
so these are the vegetables for us to share. Christina, here's some rice for you. Mm -hmm. Here's my portion, guys. Big manly portion. I know Sri Lankans love a lot of rice. So you guys would like this. So we have nice mutton curry with the yellow rice. Some sauteed vegetables on the side. I'm excited to try this. Every time I make it, it's always a little bit different, but it's always good. Really, the best is the best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So, guys, thank you for, for watching. We're going to taste them now, let you know how it is, how it tastes. But I'm going to try, try Christina's rice first. Mmm. Your rice is great. Yeah, I really love long grain wasabi rice. I used to not think it mattered that much, so I would always just buy the cheapest rice. <laughs> but luxury Christina has convinced me that it is worth it, and I, I guarantee it tastes so much better. Yeah. Okay. For the cashews. Cashews aren't cheap, so I try not to buy too often. Because I am cheap. <laughs> but cashews really make it taste good. Oh my god. It's really melting. Um, so it's uh, probably spicy. Since God, uh, Donia added more, <laughs> co uh, more coconut milk. And really, meat is like melting. Melting in the mouth. So tender. And the flavor is perfect. Mm. Very rich. Like, look, even like so a piece of meat, it's, you can see how it's soft. Just like by spoon. Mm, yeah. Here it's a... no knives needed, guys. Yeah. So this is fat, <laughs> which mm. is why I can't. But yeah, like it's really very, very tender. Yes. Don't. You... <laughs> <laughs> it was with fat. <laughs> Give me the fat parts. So those are my favorite. <laughs> Okay, actually, I don't like it's fat. <laughs> Perfect, I like the fatty part. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And vegetables, <clears throat> vegetables also like so soft and sauce in which it was like cooked is really great. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, Christina might be uh, just a being nice to all of us, so I'm gonna taste it. I'll, I'll let you know. Because I made this a few times, and every time it's different. Usually it's good. Oh! <laughs> and this time it's fantastic! <laughs> that meat is so tender. Mutton is normally just so chewy. <clears throat> That's why I never have, I like, never like beef or mutton. Mm -hmm. Especially in Sri Lanka, it's normally chewy. But this way, this cooking method, Butter, guys, buttery. <laughs> and Christina, Christina's giving my meat. <laughs> but thank you for giving me so much. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this cooking video. If you liked it, leave a comment, let me know. I normally never make videos like this, just travel videos. But to me, a big part of traveling is experiencing the culture, eating the food, and then going to another level of actually cooking their food. Maybe yeah. putting a little bit of our own twist on it. Let me know in the comments. Is this traditional Sri Lankan food or is this completely different? Is there something that you can take from this or you can give some advice? But I guarantee if you came to taste of this, you would like it. So, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for cooking. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye guys.